Today, we're gonna show you how to travel Ibiza. From the world-class nightlife and parties to the holistic and spiritual side of the island. The epic adventures and landscapes, and of course, it wouldn't be a guide without showing you the food and restaurants that make this island so special. After trying to research Ibiza, this is the all-in-one video I wish I had before arriving here. Let's get into it. Now before we get into it, you need to know Ibiza is 100% one of the world capitals of partying. But the surprising part is, you actually might come here even if you don't party. In fact, it's the reason we came back again this year. It has so much to offer, which is exactly what this video is going to show you. The island is pretty small. You can drive from north to south in just one hour. Ibiza locals will tell you the best part of the island is the north and the northeast. But most travelers and club goers will end up around here, near the airport. In fact, one club is literally right next to the airport. The island is super seasonal, with it being busy from about May till about October, but the peak is during summer months. And another thing you should know is that the island isn't cheap, but we'll show you more about prices as we go. Despite the island being very small, you're gonna want at least five days here, if you plan to follow this itinerary. Let's get this trip off to an epic start here. So, I've broken this video down into five distinct sides of Ibiza. We got natural Ibiza, party Ibiza, holistic Ibiza, cultural Ibiza, and foodie Ibiza. But let's start with the natural beauty of this island. All right, we are just about there. An hour and a half hike from this starting point here has brought us to the top of the mountain and just ahead, the famous view. This is Esvedra, and it's said to be one of the most magnetic places on the planet. A lot of people believe it's a very spiritual place, a place where you get really connected with the island. I don't know how much I buy into it, but I'll tell you one thing. I definitely buy into this view. It is one of the most stunning viewpoints. And over there, some guys living their best lives, painting away. Definitely a must-add spot to your visit here to Ibiza. Now I will say, if you're not a hiker, you can also just go to the parking lot, but you'd be robbing yourself of a very beautiful hike up. But the natural side of Ibiza is so much more than just mountains. Last year, we rented a yacht with our friends to see the coastal side of Ibiza, and it was spectacular. The coastline of Ibiza is a masterpiece, and being out here on a calm day with amazing people is just unbeatable. The water is a little bit cold, but you'll be feeling so good afterwards and is so blue as well. It's literally the blue we all chase when we travel. Taking out a yacht can be a super fun and intimate experience. We ended up using a company by the name of Boats Ibiza, and they were really good. This comes as no surprise, it wasn't cheap. But let me show you where the yacht took us. This is a place by the name of Formentera, and it is basically a dreamy spit of sand right off the coast of Ibiza, and this is where you can find amazing restaurants, amazing beaches, and just a total escape surrounded by blue water. We took the boat to a restaurant called Beso Beach in Formentera, and it was my favorite part of the trip. It was literally one of my favorite moments in life. It's this super hidden away restaurant, literally disguised into the beach, but what happens inside is incredible. <laughs> That was literally a scene out of a movie. I've never had anything like that. That lunch was so fun. The energy, the staff, the food. Maybe we're a little biased because we were traveling with one of the most fun groups you could have, but this is a place you must, must visit if you can get a reservation. It is the most popular restaurant in Formentera. And surprise, surprise, it's also very expensive. But if you're watching this thinking, look, I don't have the budget for a yacht, that's okay. You can still get the Formentera experience by taking this. There are ferries running every 30 to 60 minutes. They're about 50 euros round trip. So you can still get the Formentera life without the price tag. As you're starting to see, there are so many ways to see the beauty of Ibiza, but one of the best is honestly just renting a car or getting a scooter and drive around the island. 
if you taxi everywhere and you're here for a while it's gonna add up it's super expensive but luckily this car here is about 50 euros a day in low season 70 and high and honestly one of the best ways to get around Ibiza the scooter I love cruising around here without aim going through the little country roads the zigzagging paths the small little towns it's a really pretty island last time we were here we rented this Vespa for about 30 euros for the day I pay three dollars a day in Bali but we're not in Bali and we drove and we found this restaurant here called Calla Gracianeta Calla Gracianeta okay I'll let her do the Spanish it was so stunning. An amazing oasis. The bluest water opens up here to a white sand beach. And I love how the restaurant is like built into the nature. It's made out of stone. Some steak, 50 euros. Paella for two people, 50 euros. Eating by the ocean, priceless. The food here was to die for. But I also died a little bit when I got served the bill. I've been bamboozled. That was not a 48 euro paella. That was 48 euros per person. <laughs> oh God, we're gonna need a second job for this. Look, we're gonna show you how to travel Ibiza. How to afford it is completely up to you. And one last natural gem is Berinha Beach, which is where in the summer months, there should be a big drum circle just about every sunset with the biggest one happening on Sundays. We went on a rainy day and nobody showed up. All right, you're in Ibiza. It's party time. Now, if you're asking us, we are more of the beach club type. We like to be in bed by 10 p.m. And beach clubs are something Ibiza does very well. You've got lots of different places where you can sip mimosas, sangria, and enjoy the sun, the music, the waves, and maybe even take out a boat and go wakeboarding off the shore. Some beach clubs are rowdy, others are very chill. We really enjoyed our start to the trip here at John Dal, which is a restaurant meets beach club. You can lounge by the water, you can eat amazing food. And then because it's Ibiza, you can literally go 24 seven. You can go from a beach club to a club, from a club to a beach club. The good times literally never have to end if you can keep on going. And if you come to Ibiza during the summer season, which is the busiest time, there's going to be artists and DJs basically every single day of the week, which every means day. lots of partying. The Vegas artists have residencies here during the summer, so that means that they're gonna be here on a one week rotation, which means you'll have lots of opportunities to see them. This year was the holistic Ibiza. Last year was the party Ibiza. Night one, we went to DC 10 and saw Damien Lazarus, epic. The next night, we went to Black Coffee at High Ibiza. Epic. The next day, we went to Pasha and saw Camel Fat. Not as epic. But the next night, we went back to Pasha and saw Monolink. Absolutely epic. In my opinion, the artist matters way more than the venue itself. And tonight, we're going out. Are we? We're going out. Ibiza season literally opens tonight. And we went to bed by 10. Let's talk about the holistic side of Ibiza because it's a really big scene here. From yoga getaways, fitness boot camps, and spirituality retreats, there's a lot of events held here in the summer months and we decided to try one. So this trip started because Christian and I were invited to come attend the Intelligent Change Summit, which is one of the very many retreats that are held here year round. But this one was very, very special. For five nights, we stayed here at the Six Senses of Ibiza, which is basically a wellness retreat in itself. But what was so cool about this experience is that it brought together all these different wellness activities that are usually found across Ibiza throughout the summer, and it brought it all under one roof. Every morning, we started with a super killer workout. One day was with Joe DeSena, who created Tough Mudder and Spartan Race, and that included a lot of suffering and a lot of burpees. Spartan! <laughs> what is your profession? Aru! 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 There was not one Spartan 2,500 years ago that was like this. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to be done. He's like, yeah, you got 90 more. The next day was more flowy and meditative as we hung out on a rooftop with Mike Chang. Uh, that's the most still I've ever gotten my mind through meditation. And then the next day, I started my morning workout by learning the way of the samurai. Don't control our soul. Control our inside of you, okay? Hold it. Use for me, keep it. 
So a big part of this Intelligent Change Summit is around relationships. So right now we're going to a workshop on intimacy, something I'm excited to hear more about. Very slowly. So this session was uncomfortable at moments. Uh, the start was basically Ruby and I pairing with a total stranger to exercise touching each other on command. Telling somebody where you want to be touched, then if they were open to doing it, they would touch you in that place. Well, some dude was basically touching my shoulder, my hand, my wrist, my forearm, my neck at one point. It was honestly a bit of a stretch, uh, but when you break down that barrier, what the instructor Chloe was saying is that for a lot of people, they are very shameful around touch, around intimacy. So this is a very helpful workshop for some people to be able to kind of unlock that self. From deep relaxation in the spa and the steam rooms. Nights spent listening to explorative music without any substances or alcohol. Which is our kind of party. To workshops and retreats around intimacy and connection. Look, I'm not the person that usually goes to wellness holistic retreats, but I am. this was an amazing experience. It opened new doors to me and I'd come back. One experience that really stood out was with Anthony and Amy when we had a breathwork experience. The whole unity of the two families. And it was for the first few breaths just to pass. So, Laughing is good. Crying is good. <laughs> Love is in the air. We so much intense feeling, a lot of emotional release, a lot of love. A lot of appreciation. Breathwork works wonders, honestly. That was crazy. I'll explain in a sec. I need to regain my breath. It's so hard to describe what just happened about an hour ago as we were at that breathwork. How often do you lock eyes, hold hands with a stranger, and truly take full attention to them? You tie in the looped breath and you do start to feel a little out of body. And that's what brought that amazing outcome at the end where everyone was just euphoric, hanging out together, celebrating life and celebrating each other. So kind of like Bali, Ibiza has a local community. It calls people that first visited and then ended up staying. And getting connected with locals is always something that enhances our travel experiences. So the other day, we went to where the locals go. We went to a holistic workout by the name of Primal Movements. And true to its name, we learned to walk like our distant cousins, the apes, the monkeys, and we worked all of our muscle groups that normally go neglected. This is a lot harder than it looks. Bear crawls, push-ups, it's all adding up. But the thing that stood out the most was actually the people we were meeting there. We ended up meeting an Ibiza local. He told us about what was going on in the community, where the locals actually go, and some of the cool upcoming events. And I think that's really fun if you plan to stay here for more than the length of this itinerary. Sal de tu nido, paloma linda, anda y prueba tu volar. Now, when it comes to culture and history, Ibiza definitely has some of the old Europe. If you go to the old town Ibiza, you can get high up into the mountain, see cathedrals and fortresses, beautiful cobblestone walkways, live music, and amazing restaurants. Not to mention, it's a wonderful place for sunset. If you want to go shopping, you've got it there from little boutiques to the H&M and Zara's of the world, and gelato. For food, I'm gonna hand it over to an expert. And when it comes to Ibiza, there are so many food options. So right now we're at Paloma. This is one of the restaurants of the island. Three different friends recommended it to us. I'm excited to have finally come here. But make sure you make a reservation, otherwise you'll end up like us getting turned back. So it's our second try at it. But on this trip, we had two other standout meals. One was La Paria, where we basically got four people's worth of food with one steak dinner grilled right in front of us. We literally came back the next day to reheat the food and eat it again. 
Don't know if they'd love me saying that, but it was amazing. And the second one was Amalure, and this was a super fancy high-end restaurant. You kind of feel like you want to dress up like James Bond. And it was such delicious, yummy Italian food. And that was just a romantic evening, just the two of us. Also, big portions, which is always a plus. So that is how to travel Ibiza. Next up, I'm going to show you how to do it in Barcelona. Let's get lost again in the next one.